last lecture, I have discussed the types and characteristic features of ascomycetes yeast. Now, I am going to give you an idea about types of basidiomycetes yeast and their basic characteristic features. Basidiomycetes yeast include both asexual and sexual forms. Many of them have unicellular haploid budding phase alternating with dikaryotic hyphae. That is, they are basically dimorphic and possess a yeast-like state. In basidiomycetes, the term yeast or yeast-like state denotes the budding haploid phase in their life cycle. These yeast-like states are readily obtainable from basidiospores, particularly in the fungi, which produce macroscopically visible basidiomata, as in tremella, philobasidium, cystobasidium, etc. In fact, our knowledge of biology of basidiomycetes yeast is fragmentary or non-existent. Many of the basidiomycetes yeast are economically, agriculturally and medicinally important and estimates indicate that the number of known species represent only 1% of the total population that exist in nature. However, there is an increased interest of the scientist to exploit such basidiomycetes yeast for their economic exploitation and also to understand their ecological role and biodiversity. Now, basidiomycetes yeasts are divided into two groups, teleomorphic and anamorphic taxa on the basis of their presence or absence of perfect state or the sexual state. In reality, the basidiomycetes yeasts, particularly of teleomorphic form, are categorized into two groups on the basis of mainly the septal morphology. One group of teleomorphic taxa are provided with simple septal pore, while the other group provided with dolipore septa in their hyphal state. Now, for further categorization or differentiation of taxa, characteristic features of basidia are utilized. And such basidial characteristics are usually important for placement of genera to the higher taxa. In this schematic outline, you can see that within the group where septa is with simple pore are further divided into three groups on the basis of their basidial structure. In one group, you can see basidia are cylindric and transversely septate, which includes the orders like Ustilaginalis, Sporidialis, Platygloelis, Septobasidialis, Atractylalis, and Agaricostilvalis. In the next group, Basidia are globose and non septate, which includes only one order that is Graphiolalis. 
In the third group, under the subhead, taxa with simple pore includes two different orders like cryptobasidialis and exobasidialis. In both the cases, the basidia are cylindric and non septed. In the next group, that is where dolipore septa is present in their hyphal state, divided again into two subgroups. In one group, basidia are cruciate septet, which includes only one order, that is tremellalis, with cirrobasidiaceae and tremellaceae, the two families. In the next group, basidia are basically accepted and includes only one order that is phylobasidialis under which two family that is philobasidiaceae and syzygosporaceae are included. Now the anamorphic taxa are grouped into two families that is sporobolomycetaceae and cryptococcaceae. However, on the basis of structure of the large subunit ribosomal DNA D1, D2 structural domain fell in the year 2000 divided basidiomycetes yeast into three classes that is ustilaginomycetes, uridinomycetes and hymenomycetes. Now, the basic characteristic features of basidiomycota or basidiomycetes is specifically. The septal characteristics have been used as primary phylogenetic characteristic feature for discrimination of taxa within basidiomycota. In one group, that is Euridinomycetes, the septal pore is simple and large one. But in this group, you can see that the wall of the septa attenuated towards the central pore. However, in Krigeria eriophori, multipore septa have been reported instead of single large pore in their septa. In Ustilaginomycetes, the septa is not attenuated towards the center and lack a true pore. However, the septal rim of this particular group is to some extent inflated and occurrence of such inflated margin vary from one species to another. Conventionally, the hymenomycetes form exhibit dolipore septa provided with typical parenthesomes. The parenthesome structure is also a taxonomic marker because in some members the parenthesome is continuous while in other it is porous, but in some other form it is capsept as you can see in the respective diagrams. In this group, dolipore septa with perforated parenthesome, in this case the parenthesome with continuous one, but in other case the capsept parenthesomes are present. So, septal morphology play an important role in systematics and phylogeny of basidiomycetes yeast. The next important characteristic feature is the presence of clamp connection in their hyphal state. In ascomycetes, such structure that is the clamp connection is altogether absent. So by the presence or absence of clamp connection, one can distinguish ascomycetes yeast from basidiomycetes yeast very easily. Now response to 
diazonium blue B reagent. I have mentioned in my earlier lecture that the ascomycetous yeast remain unstained when treated with this particular reagent. But basidiomycetous yeast colony gives purple or red coloration. That means give positive reaction. Next is the urease reaction. Unlike ascomycetous yeast, basidiomycetous yeast can hydrolyze urea easily and thus gives positive reaction of urease test. Now comes to the structure of cell wall. I have mentioned in my earlier lecture that the inner wall of ascomycetous yeast is uniform and continuous. But in basidiomycetous yeast, the cell wall at the budding state or hyphal state is multilayered laminated structure. In septal form, you can see that the dark light and dark layers constitute the wall of the basidiomycetous yeast in their hyphal forms. When you see a budding structure, you will also able to see the dark light, dark layering of the yeast cell. In this electron micrograph, you can see that dark light and dark layer constitute the parent cell wall while the wall of the emerging bud is mainly made up of light layer but you can see the boundary inner and outer boundary composed of little bit darker material. So this cellular difference is very clear when compared with ascomycetous yeast. The next characteristic feature is the polysaccharide composition of cell wall. Actually presence or absence of xylose in the cell wall is an important taxonomic and phylogenetic marker for basidiomycetous yeast. It has been observed that on the basis of presence or absence of xylose in their cell wall, one can place genera into their higher taxa. Say for example, in sporobolomycetesi, the cell wall composed of fucose, that is xylose is absent, while in phylobasidiasi, the cell wall of the members contain xylose and glucuronic acid. However, chitin remains present in the budding cells and their amount is little bit higher, around 5% of the total. And they usually form a small transparent layer near the budding site. On the basis of analytical data of purified cell wall, four different groups of carbohydrate profiles can be recognized. One is Ustilago type, where the amount of glucose in the cell wall is maximum and only the balanced amount of mannose and galactose are present. In mycobacterium type, the amount of mannose is higher than that of the amount of galactose and fucose. In tremella type, the amount of glucose is maximum, but moderate amount of mannose and xylose present in their cell wall. In dacrymysis type, the xylose predominate, but some amount of glucose and mannose are also present. So, from the compositional point of view, 
one can differentiate or distinguish ascomycetous yeast from the basidiomycetous one. Cellular growth as in ascomycetous yeast takes place by serially produced new cells from particular site. But the basic difference between ascomycetus and basidiomycetus yeast is that the budding in basidiomycetus yeast always takes place from a particular site. Bud formation in basidiomycetus yeast takes place from a particular locus repeatedly generations after generations. In reality, after several generations of budding, a collar is produced around the bud site being composed of splayed wall layers which in majority cases form a rough around the collar. You can see that these four splayed wall layers which constitute the rough at the budding site as observed in the electron micrograph of a budding basidiomycetus yeast. The budding in basidiomycetus yeast is enteroblastic entirely. In enteroblastic type of bud development, what happens? The inner wall of the cell participate in the bud formation and that is why the budding basidiomycetus is cell are considered as a phyalid. Now, in the electron micrograph, you can also see that the inner wall of the parent cell is continuous with the wall of the bud. Now comes to the point that is nuclear division. Nuclear division in basidiomycetus yeast is something different from that of the budding in ascomycetus cell. The division of nucleus takes place inside the bud in contrast to the parent cell in basidiomycetus. Actually, initial stage of spindle elongation takes most of the nucleus into the bud cell, leaving behind a small portion containing nucleolus which disappear typically. Division and spindle elongation takes place entirely within the bud. After a second phase of spindle elongation, a portion of bud nucleus back into the parent cell and finally divides into two. As a result, the parent cell and the bud contains one nucleus in each. In the diagram, you can see that this is the bud portion inside which the spindle elongation is taking place. And this is the part of nucleus, parent nucleus, which contains the nucleolus and finally disappearing within the parent cell. Elongation of the spindle apparatus usually push the nascent daughter nucleus into the parent cell and finally divides into two as you can see in the last diagram. Nuclear guanine plus cytosine content usually ranges between 50 to 70 percent but average is always above 50 percent. Sexual cycle. 
two types of anamorphs are recognized in Basidiomycetes yeast. In one type, teleospores are formed and germinate to produce basidiospores and basidia. In the second type, teleospores are totally absent but bud formation takes place from the hyphae or yeast like cells. In the diagram you can see that from a typical dikaryotic teleutospore the metabasidium is produced first which undergoes septation and gives rise to four celled basidium bearing basidiospore. But in jelly fungi what happens the basidia develops from the hyphal part unlike teleutospore as observed in eurodinalis. In the next diagram you can see the single cell yeast like structure gives rise to basidiospores after meiosis. Whatever it may be the pattern, after nuclear division, the basidia becomes fragmented to form fragmobasidium as you can see in uridinalis and ustilaginalis. But in other groups, it remains as it is, that is accepted. And in that case, the basidia is termed holobasidia. Whatever may be the differentiation pattern, always the metabasidium remain unicellular. After meiosis, it undergoes segmentation to form four celled fragmobasidium bearing basidiospores. However, there are some orders where teleospores are basically dikaryotic and with maturity becomes diploid. In those cases, before germination, the nucleus divide mitotically and one of the daughter nucleus enter into the metabasidium, undergoes meiosis and after that the metabasidium becomes fragmented. In other groups, a sibling nucleus enter into the metabasidium and then undergoes segmentation to form fragmobasidium. In the members of Ustilaginalis, like Eurodinalis, the metabasidium segmented after meiosis. However, after formation of basidiospores, the basidiospores germinate via budding. So, unicellular phase is prominent in this group after formation of basidiospores as I have mentioned at the outset of my lecture. Now, like Ascomycetes fungi, Basidiomycetes yeast also produce mycosin or the killer toxin which are proteinaceous or glycoproteinaceous in nature. In reality, the toxin of sporovolaceous member is inactive against phylobasidiaceous member or tremulaceous member. That means toxin producers remain resistant 
toward their own members, but it can affect or kill the species of other species or strains of other species. This difference between sensitivity and killing pattern may be utilized for taxonomic purposes as in ascomycetosis since the killing pattern is quite different and specific one. However, information regarding killing pattern and toxin sensitivity is very negligible. So, a thorough study in this regard is necessary before utilizing the killing pattern as a taxonomic tool. Mm -hmm.